tax lien or, well, in Arizona, for instance, they refer to it as a tax lien. In other states, they'll say tax certificate, sometimes tax lien certificate. That's simply a piece of paper that you get that shows that you paid somebody else's delinquent real property taxes. In other words, in most states in the United States, something like 33 states, if a property owner doesn't pay his or her taxes, real property taxes, then investors are given an opportunity to pay those taxes for the property owner. And when the investor does that, the investor gets this tax certificate or tax lien certificate or tax lien. The reason that some states call it a tax lien is that when you get the certificate, in all these states you get a certificate, you also get an assignment of the real property tax lien uh, so that you have an evidence of indebtedness, the evidence that you paid somebody else's taxes, and that certificate that is secured by a piece of real property, and it's the tax lien that secures the certificate to the piece of real property, hence the term tax lien. A tax deed, um, that relates to another method of collecting delinquent taxes. Uh, in many states, a minority of states, but 20-some you know, states, if somebody doesn't pay the real property taxes, what happens is their property will be sold. And the high bidder at that sale, that's typically called a tax sale, will get a deed to the property. They will own the property. They get the property. And that deed is oftentimes referred to as a tax deed or uh, in typically in states where the treasurer collects the taxes, uh, it'll be called a treasurer's deed. So it's basically an oral bid auction. It's a foreclosure. You're really foreclosing on the real property tax lien, which secures the payment of the real property taxes, if they're not paid, they foreclose on that lien. There's a foreclosure sale, typically called a tax sale. And the bidder, it, you bid up on the property, the high bidder on the property, gets a deed to the property, a tax deed. An individual can buy, can literally buy real property for pennies on the dollar at these tax sales. Uh, and it doesn't really matter whether the tax sale is through the certificate process or whether it's through the deed process. Now, the deed process is easiest to understand. What you're basically doing is foreclosing on the real property tax lien that secures um, the real property taxes that are due. You have a public oral bid auction sale and typically the opening bid is just back delinquent taxes. And since back delinquent taxes are typically approximately 1% or so of the value of the property, you could have at a tax sale where we're talking about a deed, where we bid up on the property, you could have an opening bid on a $100,000 property of just 1000 or $2,000. And you could make a very good purchase if you attended one of these sales and say nobody else happened to attend or nobody else attending happened to be interested in that property to bid against you, you could get it at that opening bid. And so obviously buying a $100,000 property for a couple of thousand dollars would be extremely attractive. Now there's another aspect of this and that is that the real property tax lien that's being foreclosed under most states law is the first lien. And basically what that means is that when that first lien forecloses, it wipes out, it removes from title all other liens against the property so that the successful bidder at the sale takes the property free and clear. And so if that bidder were to go to an auction and be the only bidder at that auction and actually get the property at the opening bid, that person could buy a valuable piece of property for just back taxes which is literally pennies on the dollar and would own that property free and clear. And that sometimes happens. I attended a tax sale in Polk County in Florida where I was literally the only person in attendance at that sale. 
In fact, I had thought that, you know, uh, I'd gone to the wrong location or I was at the wrong date. Um, uh, so I actually checked with, with the people that were conducting the sale to make sure I was at the right place at the right time, and I was. I was literally the only bidder. There were like uh, eight or, or so properties, and I got every one of those properties at the minimum bid. Okay, but in reality, uh, it's the certificate states, or the tax li uh, lien or tax lien certificate states are, that are the most interesting because in those states, if you buy the right certificate, that is if you pay the taxes due on a particular property and get a certificate uh, evidencing you paid taxes on that particular property, and the property owner doesn't pay you back, then you can apply for and get a deed typically from the county treasurer's office, and there is no public oral bid auction sale, so that if you buy the right certificate, what happens is you, in effect, attend the sale like I attended in Polk County, where nobody else attends because there isn't any sale. Nobody else can attend a sale, can't attend a sale that doesn't exist. So tax sales are very interesting, whether they be deed or whether it be certificate. Deed, though, the public's invited and the property could be bid up. Certificate, public isn't invited, only the certificate holder for that particular certificate is invited to the sale, which means if you get the property, if the certificate is not paid off, you always get the property for back taxes. Investors can get uh, a high rate of very high rate of return in the tax sale area. Um, one uh, uh, way that that can be done uh, is to get into the certificate states and buy certificates uh, because if the what, what you're doing is you're paying somebody else's taxes and that individual that you paid the taxes uh, for, has a period of time within which they can repay you the taxes, pay the back taxes. We say that redeem the property. They have the period of time to redeem the property. And when they do, they repay you what you paid for the property plus a certain interest rate return. In a large number of the certificate states, that interest rate return is very high. Uh, let's take an example, uh, Iowa. Okay, in Iowa, if you pay somebody else's taxes and you get that tax certificate, uh, the property owner has one and three quarters years, one year and nine months within which to pay you back. And when they pay you back, they have to pay you what you paid. So you bought a certificate for $1,000. They got to pay you back the $1,000 plus 24%. It's actually 2% per month or fraction thereof. So 2% for every month you actually held that particular certificate, they've got to pay you that back. Well, 24% is a very nice interest rate return for a paper investment. But what makes it particularly attractive is that that investment is extraordinarily well secured because it's secured by the real property tax lien against the property that you paid the taxes on. So that property, you choose that property. It could be a single family dwelling in a nice neighborhood. And that real property tax lien, say in Iowa and almost all of the states in the United States, is a first lien. That means it's senior to all mortgages. So if you have an institutional lender with a mortgage in Iowa, uh, that's actually that first deed that that first uh, mortgage is actually a second lien it's second to the real property tax lien uh, which means that uh, the real property tax lien holder gets paid off before the lender would get paid off that tax lien is extraordinarily well secured not only because it's a first but because the taxes that you paid say on a hundred thousand dollar property might be just $1,500, $2,000, which means that your loan to value would be just one and a half or 2%. You have what we say a 98% equity cushion. Now, what does that really mean? Well, if we take a look at the institutional lender, 
that made the mortgage loan, that institutional lender is now making, say, a 30-year fixed loan for 7.5%, 8%, and they have a 80, 90, 95% loan to value. What would happen if that property were to decline in value 50%? Well, if you've got a 90% loan to value, 40% of your loan has no real property to secure it. The tax lien, okay, where you've got just, say, 2% loan to value, if that property dropped 50% in value, your loan to value would be 4%. In other words, drops 50% in value, you still got all sorts of equity to secure your investment. Now, that's got to be extraordinarily well uh, secured. I mean, far, far better than lenders, any institutional lender anywhere. And institutional lenders are getting five and a half and eight, you're getting 24%. That's like three times, three times the interest rate and you've got security that's so much better. It's a heck of an investment. One thing I think everybody has to realize is that when somebody says that the real property tax lien is the first lien, that it's senior to the first mortgage or the first deed of trust, what that really means is that if you get that property at a tax sale, whether we're talking about an auction deed tax sale or whether we're talking about getting the property because you bought the right certificate. If you get title to that property, you get that treasurer's deed, you get title to that property free and clear of all those liens that are junior. Okay, senior lien is the first lien. All the other liens are junior. What happens is they get, as we say in the business, wiped out. <laughs> Now, it doesn't sound like a fancy term, but that's the term everybody uses. They get wiped out. And what's wiped out mean? They get ripped off the property, off the title of the property, so that when you get that tax deed, you get that treasurer's deed, that deed doesn't have that mortgage against it, or that deed of trust, or that any other lien against it. You own it free and clear. Well, the, of the certificate states, you know, where you, you uh, pay somebody else's taxes and you get a certificate, and if they pay you back, if they redeem, they give you your money back plus an interest rate return. Some of those uh, interest rate returns are astoundingly high, uh, even though you have this fantastic security. And the reason for it is that the counties want either the property owner to pay the taxes, so take Iowa where 24%, that's a very high return. If that induces the property owner to pay the taxes, because if the property owner doesn't, the taxes are in default and the property owner is going to have to pay 24% for not having paid the taxes. But if the property owner persists and refuses to pay the taxes, then uh, an investor is going to pay those taxes because the investor wants that 24%, that 24% very well secured. Now, there are other states that actually have interest rates that can exceed the 24% because there are many states that have a penalty return. And what we mean by a penalty return is that it doesn't matter when the taxes are paid off, you get that particular percentage return. Uh, we could take a state like uh, Texas, where technically it's not really a certificate, it's a deed where we say it's encumbered by a right of redemption. That is, you got a deed, but the property owner can buy the property back can redeem the property, so it's a little like a certificate where you got the certificate and the certificate's paid off. Well, in Texas, the uh, period of redemption for most properties is just six months. That period to pay off is just six months. And if it's paid off within that six-month period, or if it's, if it's redeemed during that six-month period, then it's a 25% penalty. Well, that means if it's redeemed, um, say, one month, into the six-month redemption period, then you're getting 25% in one month or on an annualized return basis, you're talking about a 600% return. If it's redeemed right at the last minute uh, of that six-month period, you're getting 25% in, 
in just six months, which means you're getting an annualized return of approximately 50%. In Illinois, you get an 18% penalty for each six month period uh, that the uh, certificate uh, uh, isn't paid off, isn't redeemed. So for instance, uh, if a uh, certificate were paid off just prior to uh, the end of the first six uh, month period, then you would get 18% in one six month period, or that'd be an annualized return of two times 18 or 36%. If the property owner didn't calculate it right and waited uh, another day, then you'd get 16 or the 18 percent for the first six month period and since you're one day into the next six month period you get your 18 percent because it's a penalty you know you get it no matter how many days you're into that that period you'd get your 18 percent just because of that one day so then you'd have two times 18 percent or 36 percent in a half a year so that's an annualized return of uh, of 72 percent approximately so you can see the Rates uh, uh, or uh, the rates of return can get uh, quite quite high. Michigan's a very interesting state. Uh, the basic interest rate on a certificate in Michigan is 15 percent, computed on a on a daily basis. The redemption period is or the payback period. Uh, the period within which the owner has to pay it off is one year. And if the owner doesn't pay it off, that certificate off within one year, then the certificate holder can start the process of applying for a deed. Um, but the property owner continues to have the right to pay it off until uh, the deed is issued. But if it's paid off during that period of time, after one year, and uh, you know, prior to the investor actually getting a deed, then there's a 50% penalty uh, so that you can get higher interest rate returns. Now, one of the investment strategies that I have used in Michigan is to go and buy over the counter. What happens is those certificates that are not sold at the annual sale, and the annual sale for all of Michigan's uh, counties is the first Monday in May. So those certificates that aren't sold at the annual sale can be bought by investors over the counter, if you will. Uh, Michigan's a little uh, unique in that uh, all of those over the counter sales for all Michigan counties are handled by a state office in Lansing. Um, for instance, if you were to buy a certificate over the counter in the middle of April, for $1,000 and that certificate didn't get redeemed or paid off prior to one year after the date of the uh, first Monday in May sale and then you started the process of applying for a deed and the property owner you know <laughs> got all excited and you know, I don't want to lose my property and, and then came in uh, and paid you off or redeemed it, that person would have to reimburse you for the thousand that you paid for the certificate plus suffer a 50% penalty and give you an additional $500 so you'd get back $1,500 and you would, would have gotten that extra $500 say in a period of maybe a month or so. If it were a month then uh, you know you would be making 50% in a month, and so on an annualized basis, what, that's 12 times 50%, so what's that add up to? 600%. Uh, 600%. Uh, uh, so that investment strategy is very interesting. And of course, the other alternative is that the uh, property owner doesn't pay it off, doesn't redeem, in which case then you get title to the property, and again, you're going to get title to a property, what, free and clear, um, for back taxes. And uh, that's the best payoff. So by using that particular strategy, and that's the interest, one of the interesting things about tax sales, there's a lot of different strategies, because every state has tax sales. And the District of Columbia has tax sales. And all of our territories, like Puerto Rico, has tax sales. And every one of those states is a little different. And many, many of those states have very interesting investment strategies. And that particular 
Michigan strategy is one of the more interesting. People ask me, um, why in the world uh, would counties give these high rates of return? You know, 16 percent in Arizona, 16 percent's one of the lower rates of return, but it's very high, 24 percent in Iowa. Uh, uh, and then uh, other situations where there's penalty returns, where your analyzed return can go over 100 percent. Why so much? Um, the reason is very simple. I, mean, I, I use uh, Iowa as an example. The Iowa legislature passed a law making the interest rate return 24 percent for one simple reason. They figured that the 24 percent is going to get the property owner to pay the taxes on time, and if the property owner won't pay the taxes on time, the 24 percent is going to get investors to pay those taxes on behalf of the property owner. So I've talked personally with the treasurer of Polk County, which is the Des Moines metropolitan area, and she told me that, uh, it was a couple of years ago, but she told me that at the completion of their tax sale, they had collected in excess of something like 99% of the real property taxes due to the county of, of uh, um, uh, to the, 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 you know, uh, Polk and Des Moines metropolitan area, city of Des Moines, the school districts, I don't know, mosquito abatement districts, all of these uh, political entities. Virtually every single dollar of taxes was collected in that fiscal tax year because the Iowa sales are always held on the third Monday in June and they have a fiscal tax year. So by the end of the fiscal tax year, the county has collected everything on behalf of the county and all the other taxing entities. Uh, and that's uh, why more and more states, including the state of California now, is, in, is considering, uh, more and more states have the certificate system and the state of California is considering uh, implementing the uh, certificate system and actually has a statute allowing for that. Because in those states where you have a deed auction, what happens is, you don't want to foreclose on the property owner for not paying back taxes just a few months after they haven't paid the back taxes. You give a property owner a long period of time within which to pay those taxes off because politically you have to. Okay, the the state treasurer, the state tax collector—I mean, the county treasurer, county tax collector—can't uh, foreclose out somebody's property for non-payment of a thousand dollars worth of taxes when the property is worth a hundred thousand dollars in five months. So in the state of California, they give you five years before they can, they'll sell the property. You're delinquent on your taxes, there's a five year period before they put the property up for sale. There's some figures now for Los Angeles County in the state of California showing that there's something like $90 million in real property taxes that are delinquent, that are in this pipeline waiting to be forced to be paid by the tax sale. Okay, by that deed tax sale, which in California they call a tax defaulted sale. Ninety million dollars, but in Polk County in Iowa, they got all their money and they got it within that particular fiscal tax year. And that's what accounts for high rate of return, well secured. They want the taxes paid. They want the taxes paid this year so services can be provided.